to make a wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss, the fall that turns his face away, and wounds which mar the chosen one, bring many sons to
In spite of the sin and ugliness in the world, God loved the world and gave of himself through Christ to provide a way of reconciliation between mankind and himself. That shows how deep is the Father's love for us. He showed us what love is and how to love. And we read about that in 1 John 4.19. We love each other because He first loved us. That is never more true than in a marriage. When Jesus began His ministry, we first read of His adult life at a wedding ceremony. This signifies to us that if your marriage is to be successful, you must ask Christ to be a part of it. Jesus used the picture of His love for the church, His bride, as a model for the human marriage. The demonstration of the love of Christ for his bride, the church, and her love of Jesus, her groom, is laced throughout the New Testament. I would like to share with you Paul's words to men and women who were entering marriage. He used the relationship of Christ and his church in explaining how a husband and wife should love each other. It's found in Ephesians chapter 5. For wives, this means submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For a husband is the head of his wife as Christ is the head of the church. He is the Savior of his body, the church. As the church submits to Christ, so you wives should submit to your husbands in everything. For husbands, this means love your wives, just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's Word. He did this to present her to himself as a glorious church without a spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. Stacy, this means you are to voluntarily submit to Jeff and his authority as head of your home. Just as we who follow Christ do so voluntarily, you should submit to him in everything. Jeff, this passage instructs you to love Stacy like Christ loves his church, even to the point of giving your life forward. As a husband, you have great responsibility to protect her and guide her so that she can remain pure. If you lead in this way, she will have no cause to hold back her submission. And to both of you, this day marks a new era in your, in your lives now united. From this day forward, you will travel life's pathway not alone, but together. It is our prayer that you will allow the Great Shepherd to lead you, and that your journey may be fulfilling in all that you do. Remember, Scripture tells us that two cannot walk together except they be agreed. And our attitude should also reflect the attitude of Christ. Paul explained this way in his letter to Philippians. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave his of his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. These words are true of how we are to relate as brothers and sisters in Christ, but also, especially so, as husband and wife. If I were to give you one statement for a good, love-filled, lasting marriage, it would be this. Build a home with Christ as the head. Don't forget to pray. Stay close to the Lord. Serve Him and remain active in His body in the church. If you could picture a triangle as representative of your marriage, with each of you at both bottom points, and Christ at the pinnacle, that should re reflect a picture of your re relationship uh, in the marriage. Then, as each of you grow and move closer to Christ, you will automatically grow closer to each other. So to both of you, you must realize
implies that if this unity is to be strong and stand against the storms of life, which, which will assuredly come, you both must be willing to sacrifice your will for the good of the other. Do you realize this and agree to it? Jeff, the Bible says of a man that when he finds a good woman, he finds a treasure far above the price of rubies. Therefore, Jeff, you must cultivate a relationship between you and Stacy so that your home will be a place of Christ-centered peace and that you bear the responsibility for cultivating that. Do you realize and agree to do this? Stacy, the Bible says that a woman must lovingly submit to her husband. Therefore, Stacy, you must be the constant example of love in your home. This will allow your children to grow up with peace, being ever confident of the love their mother has for their father. Stacy, do you realize and agree to do this? You may have thought you got off this afternoon, but I'm going to ask all the attendants you take on this as well. To everyone here witnessing this marriage, family and friends are very important in supporting and cultivating a good marriage relationship. Will all of you agree to pray for Jeff and Stacy, support their mutual interests, and encourage them as they walk together in life from this point forward? Amen. You did well, thank you. <laughs> this ceremony of marriage in which you come to be united is the first and oldest in all the world, first celebrated in the presence of God Himself. Marriage is a gift of God, given to comfort the sorrows of life and also to magnify all the joys that it brings. Jeff and Stacy, because God places such a high value upon marriage, it must not be entered into lightly or without thought, but with careful consideration, knowing that God is the ordainer of marriage. Marriage is the clasping of hands, the blending of hearts, the union of two lives as one. Your marriage must stand, not by the authority of the state or by the seal of your wedding certificate, but by the strength of your love and by the power of your faith in each other and more importantly in God. You can have the same kind of home if you recognize God as the center of your marriage and the source of romance and love and affection because these are His gifts to you. So build your home on a spiritual foundation. Do you consent to do this? With God, you will have everything. Without Him, you will have nothing. Move to the vows. Vows are important. They represent a covenant between two people. That is entirely different than entering into a contract. A contract outlines the conditions upon which two parties are obligated to act towards each other. There are conditions and terms and qualifiers that determine how one person or party relates to another. If a person omits something that should be done or does something forbidden in the contract, the contract specifies what the other party is permitted to do. A covenant as seen in Scripture is entirely different. Entering a biblical covenant outlines the promises made with no qualifiers. In other words, the vows you are about to take are taken, are promises to each other that you will uphold, even if the other party doesn't hold up to their bargain. Again, this mirrors the agape love that God shows us. He loved us even while we were in sin. And he will love us in spite of our sinful nature. His love is expressed even if our love is not returned. If you are prepared to make these unconditional promises to each other in the presence of these gathered and in the presence of God, face each other and join hands. We'll start with you, Jeff, okay? I, Jeff, take you, Stacy, to be my wife. I Jeff, that you stay you know I mean. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer. For better, for worse, <coughs> for richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In 
sickness and in health. To love and to cherish until we are parted by death. To love and to cherish until we are parted by death. In the presence of God and everyone here, this is my solemn vow. In the presence of God and everyone here, this is my solemn vow. Stacy, repeat after me. I, Stacy, take you, Jeff, to be my husband. I, Stacy, take you, Jeff, to be my husband. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse, for richer, for poor. For better, for worse, for richer, for poor. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish until we are parted by death. To love and to cherish until we are parted by death. In the presence of God and everyone here, this is my solemn vow. In the presence of God and everyone here, this is my solemn vow. The wedding ring is the outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace, signifying to all the uniting of Jeff and Stacy in holy matrimony. There are two things that we notice about these rings. First, they're round. The circle represents God's eternal love for us and the eternal love between Jeff and Stacy. There is no beginning, there is no end. Second, the ring is made of precious metal, one sought after and greatly valued by people. This symbolizes the precious love experienced between Jeff and Stacy. Wherever you go, you will carry these rings with you as a reminder of the covenant you made this day. And whoever sees these rings will know that you belong to another. Jeff, as you replace the ring on Stacy's figure, would you repeat after me? Stacy, I give you this ring as a symbol of my covenant. Stacy, I give you this ring as a symbol of my covenant. And with all that I am and all that I have, I honor you. And with all that I have and all that I am, I honor you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Stacy, as you place a ring on Jeff's name, you repeat after me. Jeff, I give you this ring as a symbol of my covenant. Jeff, I give you this ring as a symbol of my covenant. And with all that I am and all that I have, I will honor you. And with all that I am and all that I have, I will honor you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, first of all, that you have called Jeff and Stacy into a personal relationship with you by your grace that is extended through Jesus. I thank you that they have evidenced their faith individually through baptism and walking in your word. Now as they bring their lives together, may that faith be strengthened even more. I thank you now for bringing them into this marriage covenant. As they grow in their relationship together, may their days be filled with joy that can only come from your hand. And as these families are blended together, may it be done so with the anointing of your Holy Spirit. Protect them and keep them in the days to come. They are weak. You are all powerful. They lack wisdom, but you know all things. They can walk only one day at a time, but you see all of their tomorrow. Undergird them with your promises and power. Anoint them with your spirit. Surround them with your presence and guide them and make them godly decisions that will bring honor and glory to your name. May the love of Christ be constantly evident in their home and in their lives. And I ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Well, Jeff and Stacy. You have come before us and before God today, making vows and promises to each other, and have offered these symbols of promises by exchanging rings. Therefore, by the power invested in me as a minister of the gospel and as the bride's father, <laughs> I pronounce you husband and wife. 
What God has joined together, let no man separate. Jeff, you may kiss your brother. Yeah. 